Hello, citizens of YouTube. This is the Geeky Nerd here. And today, we're going to be talking about flash hiders versus muzzle brakes. So before we begin, I'd like to send a big thank you out to everyone who has subscribed, commented, and liked previous videos. I do appreciate you guys, and it lets me know if you guys are liking the content, join, want, want to see something different, and a few of you have given fantastic ideas that I'm going to uh, put in a few other videos. And if you haven't already yet, please uh, consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. With that said, we're going to get to it. Now, both of these guns have been safety checked off camera. They're two of the most awkward guns to be able to try to safety check on camera. So fret not, everything is fine. Now, between these two, which one do I like, a flash hide or a muzzle brake? Well, it depends on the application. And we'll kind of talk more into that. And I'm actually going to take the muzzle brake that's on this Tavor off um, for a couple of reasons. And this uh, Ruger Ranch chambered in 556223 it has a flash hider on it i always want to call it a remington i don't know why i think it's because they're going out of business and i'm having nostalgia <laughs> um so let's uh let's get into it here now a muzzle brake as you see here it operates on the principle of uh basically diverting the gas into different directions uh so it's not just coming out the front now muzzle brakes typically do give you a fireball effect because the hot gases are being redirected they're not being dissipated into a larger area so you do still get that fireball which we'll get into flash hiders in a second now once the once the bullet is leaving the barrel it's going to have its gas uh coming right behind it pushing it along well, the bullet's going to leave while it still has all that gas it's trying to get out and expand What's going to occur is on a muzzle brake like this, it's going to exit and then hit this first baffle. Once it does, it's going to essentially push the gun in a forward motion, uh, you know, microscopically. You're not really going to, you, I how to put this, it, like you're not going to feel like dot, 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 like you're not going to feel each baffle strike. It's going to happen so quickly, you're not even going to know. But, um, focus, there we go. With it, with the gas actually hitting each baffle, one, two, three here, and you know, you got different ones here. This is just my QD mount um, that I use with my cans here. And uh, basically, it's going to take those gases and it's going to redirect them out the side. Now, it does have two ports on the top as well, but none on the bottom. So if you think of it, when you're firing, the gas is going to come out the top, which your gun traditionally has a want to rise when you're firing in quick succession, it's going to direct the gases up. So equal opposite reactions, as we all know, it's gonna push it down. With these baffles, what it's gonna do is same thing. It's going to, um, it's going to take these, uh, take the gases and use them as a force to act to push the gun forward and basically redirect the energy instead of it going up it's going to go forward which is going to keep you straight um, more flatter shooting so muzzle brakes are nice and their main purpose their main goal is to just make sure you have the flattest shot possible and if you're trying to get those quick double taps or you're trying to uh you know just do a mag dump but don't want to be uh you know shooting at the birdhouses then uh muzzle brake is fantastic Switching gears, going into uh, flash hiders. This flash hider here, same thing. It's a QD mount for my cans, uh, suppressor cans. <laughs> uh, now, as you see here, it has uh, it has open cuts on all sides, and this one I just like in particular because it just looks pretty cool. Now, with flash hiders, it does, as the name implies, it hides the flash of your rifle, and it does that by as soon as the same thing as the bullet's leaving. Uh, as soon as it leaves, it's going to have the gas. Well, the gas has to go somewhere, but instead of hitting a singular break, I'm sure if you see it here, you know, just hold it like that. Um, instead of hitting a baffle, it's actually going to have more of a, um, more of an area to diffuse out. So it's going to direct the gases, but not in any way that's going to, going to uh, make your shot flatter. It's just going to give more of a surface area, if you think of it, for that gas to escape. Now, when you have just no flash hider on the end of any rifle, what's going to happen is as soon as that projectile leaves, it's going to have all that gas coming behind it, and as soon as it hits the open air, it's going to expand in every single direction. That was the uh, scope gap popping up. <laughs> um, kind of spooked me there for a sec. And it's going to give a nice big fireball, and it's going to give a 360, um, 360 ring of fire, <laughs> quoting Nemo here. And... 
what this is going to do is it's going to as it's coming out it's basically going to force it to go along these channels so you can see it's going to come out it's going to hit this first ramp and be redirected out so instead of it being a 360 ball of fire it's going to give that gas just a minuscule amount of time enough to mix with the air in order to lessen the fireball effect that's going to have one downside that this of course gives is that there is no reduction in muzzle rise so uh so if you're trying to shoot quickly this isn't going to do anything other than limit your flash now this being on a bolt action it makes perfect sense because no matter how fast you think you can shoot a bolt action you're not going to be able to get double taps off on this rifle so flash adder makes sense now between the two which one do i prefer again depends on the situation now i mentioned earlier in the video that this Tavor, I'm going to be changing out the muzzle brake. The reason for that is when you bring up and you shoulder the rifle, my hand is pretty close to the end of that barrel. Now, remember what I was saying, how it's going to redirect the gases to blow out the sides? Well, once it does that, you can feel that on your hand. Now, it, it, it isn't substantial, but you still feel it and it, it you know gives a bit of discomfort. Now, of course, again, a go to battle rifle, things like that, who the hell cares about discomfort? But, <laughs> um, but just for regular plinking, it's a little, little bit uncomfortable. Now, for Tavor, it, it's very well balanced, so, um, so muzzle rise isn't really too much of a big concern for myself. So I'm going to change it out. I tried it. it nothing wrong with the muzzle brake itself, but I'm going to just swap it out just for that reason. Now, one also thing you want to remember with muzzle brakes is, especially if you don't have out, uh, access to an outdoor range and you're limited to indoors, your neighbors to the left and right of you are going to hate you because you got to think when you're, when you're, uh, you know, behind that barricade there, your barrel is traditionally sticking out. So your guns like, or the walls like right here and your barrels out here, well, those gas are being redirected and they're going to go into that first little cavity in the guy next to you. So for indoor ranges, I, I really don't recommend them. You can use them. But they kind of jar your teeth, they jar your neighbor's teeth for sure, and they kind of just make everyone have a less enjoyable experience. So muzzle brakes are really good for outdoors. And that also lends itself to uh, if you're doing any kind of CQB or, you know, um, or you're looking to have something for your home protection, I would shear away uh, from a muzzle brake. Again, for the fact that as the gas is being redirected, it's going to hit both sides of your wall and your house and going to ring off your ears as well as the bad guy's ears and essentially could cuss you. Now, the shot's already loud enough. This is going to amplify it. So not really the best setup for uh, for anything in close quarters. Now, if you put a can on here like I do, those points are moot. And some people say when you run a muzzle brake with a can, it's like the sacrificial first baffle. I don't really believe in that train of thought, but it's out there. So read read with what you will. Now... Moving on to flash hiders. So flash hider here, like I was saying, mitigate your flash. Where do you really want that? If you want that in a, um, a few instances. One, if you're doing any kind of CQB to where you're inside a hallway, you're inside a house, your home protection rifle. And one, you don't want to... You don't want, you don't want to concuss yourself. Two, you don't want that giant fireball flash to blind, you know, your night vision in the middle of the night, like it will with a muzzle breaker or without any kind of muzzle device. And three, if you're, um, if you're looking to reduce the possibility of someone be able to tell where you are now, that also does just, just doesn't translate into close quarters. That also translates into any kind of long distance things. Cause you could say, Oh, well, the flash came from over there. I know the person's over there. So that's really a good point for flash hiders. Now, um, now, <sighs> flash hiders, they come in all shapes and sizes. You have the standard A2 ones, which are on rifles, which, unlike this one, they actually have a covered bottom. So if you're on a prone position, uh, like laying like this, like with a rifle, and you, uh, you fire, it actually won't hit down below and basically kick, kick up dust. Now... It kind of acts like a compensator slash uh, slash flash hider. So just how this muzzle brake up here has those two ports on the top and it redirects to keep your muzzle down, it does the same thing, but it also mitigates flash. But it's a good compromise. It's not a perfect solution. Well, basically, if it is anything under 16 and a half inches, I will run a flash hider. If it is anything 
over 16 and a half inches, I will run a muzzle brake. Now, why do I say that? Is, well, this is a 16 and a half inch uh, Ruger. Again, I want to keep on a calling of Remington. <laughs> uh, why do I have a flashlight on it? Well, I take into account the fact that my bolt actions, if I'm not going to be running them fast, there's th I mitigate the point of a muzzle brake um, just because I'd rather have flash suppression. Now, on the 14 and a half or the 16 inch less, I'm getting my measurements all mixed up here, guys. <laughs> on the 16 inch less, then I want that flash hider because I don't want the, um, you know, the feeling of my hands and kind of discomfort to me and to anyone around me because uh, that barrel is a lot closer to me. Now, I try to go against with this Tavora just to see how it works. It uh, didn't really work, so that's why I'm going back here shortly. I just got to, um, you know, thread it off here. So, in a perfect world, this would be here and then that would be here. But, uh, muzzle brake, the main thing you want is if you are doing quick double taps or quick succession. So, on a 16 and a half inch of standard AR, then uh, a muzzle brake is perfect. Your hand is far enough from the barrel to where you're not going to have any discomfort and it's a semi automatic rifle, so you're going to be getting those quick shots off. So, it's going to it's going to uh, um, improve your accuracy and kind of just keep you steady and you're not going to have any discomfort coming back to you. Flip side, again, the the most important thing you want to take away from this, guys, is all down to your personal choices. Kind of take the information I'm getting, uh, giving out here and just you know put that in your own direction as far as, hey, this fits for me, this doesn't fit for me. If that same AR, you're going to be using it as, a, as your sole home defense rifle, then I would say get a flash hider. Don't do a muzzle brake because of the effects that I spoke of earlier. And uh, uh, that's that's generally how I break it down in simple terms is anything under 16 and a half inch, I go a flash hider. If anything over 16 inches or 16 inches at, I do a muscle break. So that's, that's just my general take. And then if it's indoors, um, if it's indoors, flash hider. If it's outdoors, primarily muzzle break. And if it's out or if it's outdoors, but really indoors because you're in a shooting range, then you be the judge. I don't know if you want to be the most unpopular guy of the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, that's my uh, that's kind of my general take on flash hiders versus muzzle brakes. Let me know what you guys think, what you guys run. Uh, also, keep a lookout here for a uh, full review on these two rifles. And I hope everyone is having a wonderful, awesome, fantastic day. I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.